Coach, what was the main focus of this morning's practice? Uh, clean up everything from yesterday's practice. Uh, in the morning, we do not tape. Uh, so it's mostly we put in underneath out of bounds, out out of bounds, two wrinkles in our offense. Uh, defensively, we went over different uh, scenarios that would happen in a game without contact. Then the night would contact and, uh, and try to do the same thing except with defense. What different do you think uh, we'll see from Steve this time around? Steve Nash? Nash? Yeah. Um, well, hopefully he can just stay healthy. I mean, the biggest thing last year wasn't his age or wasn't uh, he wasn't ready to go. He just broke his leg, and uh, he had a hard time, you know, getting back after that because when you break your leg, you can't do your exercise. So he spent about seven or eight weeks of his back going out and everything else. So he couldn't really get back in the NBA shape. This year, he's he's very healthy and ready to roll and uh, and making sure he takes care of himself early. Can he still be that guy that we're accustomed to seeing? I, I think so. Uh, I think uh, I don't know if he's the same guy as when he was 30, but uh, uh, there shouldn't be much of a draw. He's still going to be one of the best point guards in the league. So uh, then we'll have to see what level. Uh, I don't think anybody knows when Father Time just grabs your grabs you, but. Uh, uh, you look where he plays, you look how, his, how fit he is, there's no reason why he's not really a top point guard. Uh, he uh, remains a top point guard. So he's his work for, what are you going to need from Steve and Boyd? Huh? So he's Nash's work for, what are you going to need from Boyd and Farmar this season? What we're going to get from Well, they can yeah. both play twos. Uh, they'll be in, off the ball, they'll be on the ball. Uh, Steve's uh, minutes, some games will be cut down, so obviously there'll be room for all three of them. We talked a little bit about the power forward, I guess, position race yesterday, but uh, how, what about shooting guards? Steve Blake, uh, who are some of the other options? Well, yeah, well, there's all kinds of options. Uh, you know, without Kobe being there, there's all kinds of options. We can move Steve Blake over. Uh, you can move Nick there, or keep him there. Uh, Nick at the three, Wesley Johnson to three. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff we can do. And that's a good thing about training camp. You have a whole month to sort it out. Let them battle it out. You know, whoever plays well. It might change during the season. Some guys are, there'll be a time for all of them. Uh, whoever starts out just depends on who's who's hot early. But uh, I'm sure they're all going to get good runs. How did your impression so far? Did you get any of your uh, impressions uh, so far? Well, so far, the biggest thing is they're very enthusiastic, great locker room. Uh, they want to get it done. And that's all you can ask for right now. Is there anybody stick, sticking out? Powell's pretty good. <laughs> they're all good. They're, I know. They're, well, you know, one day it's one guy, one guy, the next day the guy's sore. And so this is times that are ups and downs. And by next week, we'll know a little bit more of what we have. Do you think he'll be more effective at center in your office? Powell? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, uh, you guys kind of forget, but the last five games, he had two triple doubles. So he was pretty effective last year. And he missed a third by like one rebound or something. So he's effective. I don't care how you play him. He's one of those guys that just wins and is effective. Was he one of those guys that just needed more time with you and more comfortable? Well, I, I more, maybe not more time with me, more, more time for me with him uh, to understand what he's doing. And he was hurt, and so was Powell, uh, so was Dwight was hurt. And it took a while to figure out how to do it, but also for them to get their footing. And, and once they did, I thought they played really well down the stretch. With, with Dwight gone, how much more are you going to need from him? Well, you know, it should have been the same. Uh, we need a lot from him, and uh, he always gives us a lot. But we'll feature him a lot more, so I think triple doubles will be a lot easier to come by. Mike, you've said the finals format. Uh, I haven't really thought about it. I hope we get there and understand. I hope I'm, I'm asking this question when uh, we're doing it. But, you know, it's been done both ways. It's effective both ways. I think they did a study in the last 20 years. The both formats didn't change anything. So. Now it's, uh, it's just a matter of uh, uh, just what's best for teams, and I mean, we'll see. You know, I think this is, but I, I don't know. Marcus Landry's played well. He always plays well. Uh, you know, he's always battling uphill, battle to make a team. But uh, I'm, I'm telling you what, any team would be lucky to have him, and uh, hopefully there will be room. You never know, but he can play. Yeah, you had him in New York. Had him in New York. He was great. Phoenix had him, and uh, they shouldn't have cut him, and, and now he's trying to still make it. So, But he always plays well. What do you like about his game? His game, uh, he knows how to play. That's a number one. He's a great teammate, too. Uh, great shooter. He's 48% from threes in the, in the NBDL last year. So he's, he's got it. He's a little bit of a tweener, but he, he can play.